Hi, this is Mrs. Zhu, and we're starting homework number 19. I'm going to start with the first problem here, number one, on irrational number. An irrational number would be a number such as not a perfect square root, or not a perfect square, or um, also pi is considered not a perfect, uh, not a, or an irrational number because it's a decimal that never ends and also because it doesn't repeat. That never ending numbers don't have a pattern. So when I look at number one, d is going to be a square root of five, which doesn't have a perfect square root because something times something doesn't equal to five. Um, and so that's why d is the answer for number one. If I skip down to number seven, then I'm looking for, again, an irrational number. So I'm looking for either pi, I don't see pi, a decimal that doesn't repeat, I don't see any decimals at all. So I'm going to have to look at some of those fractions that I see. Because I see square root of 8 over 3, and square root of 8 is not a perfect square root, then I would say that C is my answer. <clears throat> Okay, turning to the next page, I'm going to do number um, 10. If I have 2 over 8, I can simplify the fraction and uh, divide both by 2 and get 1 over 4. 1 over 4 is the fraction, and to change from a fraction to a decimal, and I can use my triangle chart. Here's fraction up here, decimal down here. If I go from fraction down, then I divide, I divide. Okay, so I can divide 1 in the box, 4 outside, so top in, bottom out. Okay, and when I divide, I get 2, 8, 25, so point 0.25. Or maybe you knew that because you've memorized that. Okay, number 13. If I have 2.5, then what I'm looking at is the 2, that is the 2 whole. 0.5 is the same as a 5 out of 10. So remember to change a decimal back up to a fraction, I would take that number and put it over the place value. Okay, uh, 5 is in the tenths place, so that's why I write 5 over 10, which is the same as 1 half. So 0.5, some of us know that as half, point five so then it's just two and a half now I don't see two and a half as my answer so I need to look for the one that's improper which is going to give me five over two which is the answer C mm. number 19 the question is asking um, how to subtract this fraction now when I subtract I need to find a common denominator and they're asking well if you use common denominator what would it be and which one shows you doing that? Now, the common denominator, when we look at these two, we know it's 18. And so you're looking for how does 9 become 18? Oh, I multiply 2 and 2. Oh, how does 6 become 18? I multiply 3 in the numerator, 3 in the denom denominator. So what you'll see is that what you do as a step here and here gives you the answer that looks like C. Okay, where you're multiplying those fractions. And if you look at the denominator in answer C, then you will see 9 times 2, and you'll see 6 times 3, which both give you 18. The other choices don't give you that. This is um, similar to problem number 22. So if you look at 22, it's the same idea. For number 20, we have this uh, chart here showing the ingredients that I need for butter, milk with flour, for my um, cookies. And I'm gonna add up all of those because I wanna take the total of what she used in her recipe. Now I'm going to add these two that are already common denominators. If I write add two and two thirds and I add one third, what I'm gonna get is two and three thirds. This makes one whole, giving me three already. Then I'm gonna add that with the one and um, 3 fourths, so 3 plus 1 and 3 fourths gives me a total of 4 wholes plus 3 fourths um, fraction. So my final answer would give me D. That's how many cups 
I need of ingredients. On the back side, I know when we get to 24 through 31, they're a little bit more complicated, something we might need to review. Not exactly covered on the test on Friday, but I did want to briefly review them with you. Um, if I have, uh, let's say, number 24, if I am multiplying powers, then what I do, my shortcut rule, is that I can add my exponents. So here, my exponents are 7 and negative 3. So when I add those together, I get 4. Okay, so my answer will be 4, keep the base, and then 4 is my exponent. So I do need to remember to keep the base. Okay, so that's the rule for 24. Also the same rule that we use in 26, problem number 20. Um, and, and sorry, problem number 30 and 31, okay, because they are all multiplying powers. When we get to 27, um, here's where I'm dividing my powers. So 27, 6 squared divided by 6 to the second. I'm dividing powers. Okay, so this is another rule. When I divide powers, actually typically the problem we see like this looks more like this with a fraction bar. So if I use a fraction bar, that might help us remember that when I divide powers, even if I forget all the rules, when in doubt, we expand out. So I would take 6 to the 6 and write 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 times 6. In my denominator, I write 6 times 6. And here, I'd be able to simplify and cross out, giving me this what is, is what is left. So what is left means that I subtracted the exponents. That's the simplized, simple rule. As I subtracted 6 minus 2, that's why I have 4 left which is why the answer is 6 to the 4th power. Answer is D, and that's the rule for that. I do keep my base as well, just like for the rule before. Keep the base. So this applies also to problem number 29 as well. Okay, let's look at number 25. When you see a negative exponent, when we see a negative exponent, 3, negative 3, remember the negative exponent tells us reciprocal, okay, where we get, where we flip a fraction. So we could find 3, positive 3, and get 3 times 3 times 3, which is 9 times 3, and that's 27. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the reciprocal of 27. So 27 as a fraction is 27 over 1. If I do the reciprocal, I just flip it. So then that would become 1 over 27, and that would be my answer for 25. What also is happening here is that the base, okay, I take the reciprocal of the base. So the base is becoming 1 over 3, and then I'm multiplying that 3 times. Okay, so that's how I also get to my answer, 1 over 27. Um, this is also the same for problem number 28. All right, we'll see you tomorrow.